just in case, I'll give you that. So why don't we why don't we start with uh, when you when you left? Well, I'm sinking here. Uh, when you first stopped dancing and you decided to pursue acting, did you have any idea that most of the characters you were going to play were going to be unstoppable physically or mentally deranged? What are you talking about? <laughs> Didn't the programmer on Dollhouse seem a little bit odd to you? You're the alternate programmer on, on Dollhouse and she was a little bit, shall we say, um, psychotic at the beginning. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I thought she was just a nice girl. <laughs> now, now we know, now we know. Did you have a preference though when you set out to be an actor? Did you want uh, to be the queen of sci-fi? <laughs> no, I really wanted to do period films. There's still a shot with them. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Which world did you enjoy being a part of more, uh, Firefly or The Terminator? I can't say it. A, a lot of people asked me yesterday uh, that, that same question, and um, I'm going to take that one to the next life, I think. Is there something there that you, um, is there a part of the science fiction universe that you would like to be in that you haven't been in yet? Something that uh, maybe appeals to you? <gasps> So many. Well, I, I, I'm still waiting for them to bring back Star Trek The Next Generation so that I can get that. And who do you want to be? I want to be Counselor Troy's assistant. <laughs> New part. Is there, um, with Joss Whedon directing The Avengers, you have kind of an end in the Marvel Universe, I would think. Any chance we'll be seeing you there at some point? Well, I'm still waiting for the phone call, I guess. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Don't you think that call should be made? <laughs> um, you're in a Western upcoming, The Legend of uh, Hell's Gate, um, and Firefly was essentially a Western, uh, and yet people say, hey, the Western genre is dead. Um, that's, it's, it's true, yeah, that's it what they say. It's crazy, I know, I know. But why do you think it is that the genre struggles uh, so much when people showed such a passion for Firefly? You, you mean westerns? Westerns in general. I'm yeah. supporting all of them. I go see every single one. I, I, it's not dead for me, that's for sure. I, I love westerns. But when I was doing Firefly, I kept saying, nobody ever lets me off the ship. I really wanted to ride a horse, and they just <laughs> wouldn't let River off the ship. <laughs> Do you have a favorite western then? Non-Firefly? Well, my, my favorite, actually, one that I watch over and over and over again is uh, it, the new 310 to Yuma. I love that one with uh, Christian Bale and Russell Crowe. I thought it was poetry. Holy do, do you um, do you have a favorite moment in Firefly? I, I know you're stuck on the ship a lot, but is is there an episode that sticks out for you as, hey, this is exactly what I set out to do, and this is what I wanted to do? I think that the the memory that sticks out for me the most will be objects in space because I just I got to be on set with Joss every day. That was my favorite. Thank you. At the end of Serenity, you basically became this uh, Terminator-like uh, person. You'd jump out and you're slaughtering all the Reavers. Did you ever get the uh, question, why didn't you guys do that earlier? I never thought of that before. <laughs> just one of those things. It was, it was just one of those things I kept thinking about as I, as I watched it. Do you ever think to yourself, um, what happened afterward? I mean, I know a lot of folks like to continue to, the idea that the, the Firefly universe lives on. Do you ever think about that iconic character of River and think, you know, what may have happened to her, what her, what her life might have been like? Or do you just let go of a character when you're done with it? No, I haven't let go. No, I haven't. I, I think that she was, she was going to be captain next season. <laughs> Does Jane get to stay around? Of course. <laughs> With shows like Arrested Development getting a second life, uh, or third life, or depending on how you look at it, um, on Netflix and other things, has there been any talk among the cast of having some kind of, uh, some kind of Firefly Serenity uh, online reunion? Oh, online, yeah, abso absolutely. We always talk about it. We, I, think, uh, I think we all have different versions of, of what we think the story should 
should do next, but yeah, we, we all dream and scheme about it. I don't think we'll ever give up completely. Tell us about your first, uh, I, I was watching an interview with you online and uh, you were talking about your very first opportunity to, uh, uh, to audition for Angel uh, as the ballerina. Tell us about that. Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. I, I missed the dance audition. There, it was actually a dance audition first. And I was out of town and my manager snuck me into the callback. And um, I wore, I wore full-on ballet outfit to my audition, which I didn't realize nobody does. I was brand new. I had barely ever auditioned for anything, and I didn't, I didn't know that Joss was going to be there. And um, I walked in, and I just, I just really went for it. And I read for him, and um, he, he was quiet after my read, and then he said, "Where have you been?" And, he looked down at my at my resume and it said paint your wagon, you know, San Antonio, Texas, which was a lie. I mean, I was in it, but I was a dancer in it, and I had said that I was an actor. And um, <laughs> he was like, oh, you were doing paint your wagon in Texas. Oh, that's... And I thought he was laughing at me. I mean, he was, but um, I left and I thought, and I said to myself, you'll never see him again. And, um, and then he, he had me come back in and he said, can you do it with an accent? And you can pick an accent, just pick an accent. And so I thought, I guess I, I've, I've always practiced my British accent in private, so I, I did it, and um, I did it for him, and, and they cast me while I was there. And uh, yeah, that was the beginning of my, my learning experience, uh, uh, learning on the job. <laughs> what what was your biggest challenge uh, going into the acting uh, world then, since you, know, you left dancing, you got into acting, you propelled before uh, Joss? What, what kind of challenges did you find yourself facing? Uh, mostly the talking. That, that was the biggest challenge. And then also just learning how to, how to read the, the call sheets. Very complicated. And learning how to stand on a mark. I remember my first scene ever was with David Boreanaz. And I stood a foot away from my mark. And... Um, and Joss came up and he was really he was really sensitive with me and he was like you know that that tape that's where you're you can stand on it you know <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> David was really sweet he was really sweet you got to play yourself in the Big Bang Theory that was a version of me that wasn't really me it wasn't really well first of all then how did it differ from you if you were sitting on the train and you had uh, those uh, those four fantastic geniuses, okay, nerds, sitting at the, uh, the table there, what, what would the Summer Glau reaction have been initially? I think they were trying to make me seem cooler than I was, you know? I was trying to act cool, but that's really not, um, I'm really not like that, you know? They, they, and I think they were trying to make me funny, you know, a funnier version of me, so um, I don't think that that I would have reacted quite the way that I did on the show, but um, it took a lot of takes to get that performance. I know that's hard to believe, but I just kept laughing. They were so funny. <laughs> I was very charmed by them all. Yeah, what, what was it like to get that call, though? Because, um, as I mentioned before, I mean, this basically shows that you're an icon of that, uh, of, of that kind of film. I mean, they're, they're not calling on anybody else were calling on, on you, Summer Cloud, you're the recognizable dream of these guys. What was that like? Well, I was, I was shooting Terminator and, and we, we, shared, we shared a lot of the same streets. We, we both worked on, on Warner Brothers a lot. And so Josh Friedman, you know, the creator of Terminator, he came with me for my first read through and it was like, you know, daddy taking his little girl to the first day of class and he watched me and, you know, Watched me try to fit in with the, all the, the the comic actors, the comedians, and um, and and they sort of like lent me to the other show for the day, and uh, I was very nervous. Um, I, from my perspective, I felt that the comedians were actually more serious on set than the dramatic actors. I don't know if that's, you know, it's very precise. The the the. Um, 
the timing and the way that they articulate all their lines and set up the scenes is very precise, whereas when you're doing drama, you can be a little bit more, um, you can be a little bit more creative in the moment. So I, I really, I, I learned a lot and I was, I was very nervous and the guys were super sweet and um, I, I walked away with a lot of respect for them. What did you try and think of when you were uh, playing the part of River and you've obviously been through such a trauma? Was there any background research that you had to do for, for uh, maybe women who have experienced trauma? Or how, did, how did you get into that role? came pretty naturally, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really do any research. I, I just read the this, read this scenes and then pretended that I was her, and that was, that was pretty much the extent of my research, to be honest with you. <laughs> Okay, then a follow-up. What was your childhood like? It was wonderful. It was just, you know, I mean, since I was a little girl, I guess people would say I was a little bit different. So, um, yeah. Again, I don't think she's really that... I didn't see her as being different. I just played the, played the scenes, I guess. Which cast member? <laughs> which cast member did you uh, get along with the most? I mean, I, I, you guys are all pretty close. Uh, take it, or maybe we, not. Well, uh, no, we're all very close. I, I, I would say that I, I absolutely still am in love with Sean Marr, and he was so good to me, and I, I it was incredibly attached to him, and I felt like I did my best work when I was with him. So I would say that. You know, as an actress, I was closest to him, and then, in general, I was just sort of like a little sister. I think that um, it took a lot of patience to deal with me in the beginning, probably because I just didn't know what I was doing at all. And uh, everybody was very patient with me and, and very encouraging, and it was a it was a safe place for me to make a lot of mistakes, and I did. And, uh, and I, I felt close to everybody, and I do have to give a lot of credit to Nathan that he really set the mood for us as a group. Um, he has so much humility, and he really has fun uh, on set every day, never jaded, never tired of being there, never taking it for granted, being a, being a wonderful role model on set. And when you're considering um, upcoming roles, is there, do you look for a genre, or do you, are you just... Anything goes. No, I don't really see genre. I, I know that people think that I, I specifically um, choose to do sci-fi, and I, I love science fiction. My, my mother read science fiction to us when we were growing up, and it really shaped my imagination quite a bit when I was a kid, but I just choose the roles based on the character. Do you have a favorite science fiction work that your mom read to you? I loved Madeline Langle growing up and C.S. Lewis. We read all of those, and... and, and um, I, I feel like they, they really um, helped me think outside the box and live in my own dream world. And as an actress, I think it's, it's, it's helped me. And what was the set of uh, Terminator or Connor Chronicles uh, like in comparison to Firefly? The set, did you say? Yeah, just the, the work and the, and the crew. Well, one thing that I like, really loved about Terminator was that I didn't have to do any kung fu. I just got to break things all the time. And that <laughs> never happened. <laughs> And I got to, you know, I just, it was, it was a different, definitely a different style of fighting and a very different, um, a very different character. I felt that when I first, first of all, I didn't want to go on the audition for a Terminator. My, my, I was on the phone with my mom and she was, she yelled at me and said, you know, you're an actress and you need to go to that audition. So I went to the audition and um, ended up getting cast and not really knowing I had never seen Terminator before <laughs> and um, <laughs> had an idea of what I thought it was like, you know, because Arnold is, you know, it, 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 just an iconic character um, from film in general, so I had an idea of what I thought it was like and I, I wondered how am I going to, how am I going to make Cameron relatable and River, I felt, she, she, she was very, um, very vulnerable naturally, just herself, and I, 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 I felt that it might be difficult for Cameron to be relatable. But then in the end, you know, I think I, I figured it out with a lot of help from, from Josh and, and from uh, the writers of that show. So it was different in that way, but I would say that we, we I was on that show longer than I was on uh, 
fireflies, so we, we did get very close as well. Uh, it was just the way that I approached the character was very different. Tell us about the Knights of Bad Aston. <laughs> LARPing is dangerous. <laughs> but we had a great time. It was like summer camp. We, were, we shot very close um, uh, to, to Seattle. We were in Spokane. And I loved it there. We shot nights for, uh, we actually shot at night for six weeks. And it was an amazing experience. Again, I learned so much from from the, the cast. I actually just, when I heard Steve Zahn was in it, I just said yes. I mean, I've always loved him and I really wanted to work with him. And um, of course, Peter Dinklage is, is in it and, and um, Danny Pudi and, and um, Jimmy Simpson and, I, and, and, um, and Ryan Quantin. And uh, it was really, really fun. But LARPing is no joke and you just cannot mess around and you have to know the rules and, and you cannot show any fear and uh, <laughs> and I don't know if I could ever do it again if I just went out and tried to do it in the forest with, <laughs> with real LARPers. Yeah. And what is your character? I, w w I was sitting with a group of folks watching a, a movie and the preview came on and at the end uh, the people next to me said, what the hell is that? And they said, is that a comedy or a horror film? And I said, I I think it's both. You um, can't categorize it. It is what it is. It is both. It is scary and it is funny and it is sad and it, it um, it's everything. I don't think that, that we would categorize it as a horror film. It's, I would say more of an action fantasy. Are you the heroine? Are, are you the, the s save the day kind of gal in that? I am. I am. I am. I play, I play Gwen, which is the closest I've ever gotten to do a period film. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a lot of hope. Tell us uh, what uh, working with uh, Adam Baldwin was like specifically, since he's going to be here later today. I wanted to get your take on the guy. He's like he's like daddy. He's on set, you know. He's 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 um, you know, he's a father in real life, and I was really close to his kids um, when we were when we were shooting Firefly, and um, you can always go to him for advice, and he's. Um, he, I think because he's been acting his whole life, he would always come to me and say, you know, it's not always going to be like this. And, and he knew, I didn't know, but he, he knew that what we have was something really special. And uh, you know what I've found from now that I've been working as an actress for 10 years, I've, I've seen that the people that are the best actors and that have been through everything, they really know how to appreciate when something's good, and they know how to make it fun every day. They aren't jaded. They, uh, they don't take it for granted. They don't have an attitude. They just, they love the work, and they make it fun every day. And that's, that's honestly how, how he is. What's been your favorite experience with the fans so far? I mean, it's uh, going from dancing to uh, Firefly with such a rabid fan base. Uh, had to have been kind of surreal. So is there a specific fan moment that you remember as, wow, I can't believe this person's a fan, or anything of that kind? Well, I, there, have been, there have been countless moments where I've just been overwhelmed with the gratitude um, of, of this experience. And I remember when I first finished Firefly, Joss tried to explain to me what this was going to be like. <laughs> and. Um, I, of course, I had no idea, but it was very exciting for me because I got my passport to come to a convention in, in England. I had never been overseas and I didn't have a passport. And uh, it was more overwhelming and more special than, than I ever could have imagined. And um, the love and the support that I've felt from, from this family, I don't, even, I don't know how to quite describe it, but, but people that people that are devoted to Joss and devoted to this genre and, and um, who, have, who have supported me over the years, I, I just can't say thank you enough. It's really hard to describe unless you're in it, you know what I mean? Probably seemed like you were in a period piece there. <laughs> it did, it did. With all it those nice own, accents. It own, yeah, it did. It was really exciting for me. And getting to travel, every, everywhere I went was uh, the, fir the first, first trip to Europe and my first tour in Europe was for Serenity. So uh, I'm just eternally grateful. What role have you found the most challenging so far? Well, I think that 
I think that in the beginning Terminator was, just because I, I, I really, it took me a while to decide how I was going to approach the character. And I know for some, for some people that watched the show, uh, there, was, there was a shift from the pilot to the series, you know, how, how we would decided to play it. So that was, that was challenging just because, you know, she is a robot and, um, you know, I wanted, she was supposed to be the most human model uh, so far in the history of, of uh, the story. And so it was a fine line. And everyone that's devoted to the story and, and already loved Terminator had a specific idea about what a Terminator is. And I, I wanted to be very respectful of that, but also wanted to do something, you know, unique. So that was probably the most complicated for me. I'm not like, well, some people might say I'm like Cameron in some ways, but it was very different for me. We've got a couple of microphones up here, and I want to open it up to some audience questions real quick. Microphones on each side. So if you've got a question for Summer, be ready for that. Is, is there an actor or actress that you've really been dying to work with that you haven't had the chance to do so yet? I would say my favorite actress is Kate Blanchett. Yes. Kate Blanchett. I don't think I could, I could work with her, though. I think I would just die, and I love, I love Meryl Streep. Is there a specific role that Blanchett's been in where you think, you know, that's that's the iconic moment? For Everything. Every time every time she takes out a role and I feel the same way about Meryl Streep, I just cannot believe the brilliance that, that, that they bring to every role and how how much they can disappear into a character. Like that's, I think, the ideal for any actress. Do you have a project lined up for after? I know Knights of Bad Astem is, is wrapped up. Do you have a project uh, lined up, ready to go? Well, I'm going back to Alpha's. Uh, 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 next month. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And I'm waiting to hear about my pilot for TMT to see if to see if that gets picked up. Nice. Let's go to uh, this microphone first. Okay. The question I had for you is uh, now you talked about how your foot got injured and that's how you had to get out of dancing. But on some of the shows like Angel and Firefly and Terminator, where you actually they show you dancing, does does that mean that your foot had healed? It did heal. Um, I was I was a pretty serious ballet dancer, and I had very bad tendonitis in my heels, and I I broke one of my toes when I was 18, or maybe I was like, I was 18, but I kept dancing on it, broken because I didn't want anybody to have my roles. So I just kept dancing on it and dancing on it and dancing on it and, and it never healed. And the tendonitis got so much worse that there just came a point where I couldn't move my foot. And when you're that age and you're that, you're, you're that competitive and you take the time off, you lose a lot of ground. And um, when I came, I, I came to LA for a summer and I, I, I tried to dance off of my point shoes and I tried to, to I thought I was going to do musical theater in LA, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I had a crush on this boy and he went to LA and then, I, I, and then when I got there he booked, uh, he booked a show on Broadway and left and I was in LA by myself and I just tried acting and some people told me that I could act so I, I went ahead and did it and then, and then I tried to go back to dancing but after I acted I just felt like that was what I was supposed to do. So my foot eventually healed. It still it still hurts quite a bit. If it gets cold, or you know how you know how it is. Like I have arthritis too. I've had arthritis since I was 12 in my toes from dancing. But I can dance in short spurts. And, and um, every every uh, every show tends to have me dance for one episode or, or dance around at least a little bit. It looks like that still brings a lot of joyful passion from you. That it the does. Dancing short. It does. It's hard for me to, to take ballet class, but I love dancing so much. Did the boy who left you for Broadway has he ever tried to make a call back? Have you ever gotten no, a chance I'm to hang up waiting. on him? No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, let's go over to this microphone. Hi. So I was wondering in Alphas, you had a lot of tattoos, and it was kind of hard to see what they were. And I was wondering what they were, and if you had any influence on them. Not as much as I wanted. I had a lot of ideas about what I wanted. I, I don't have any tattoos, and I don't, I'm not really, I don't see myself getting a tattoo, um, but I was super excited about having them for the show. Um, they were, I think the, the inspiration were um, some of Da Vinci's sketches, 
and that's what I had mostly on my chest and on my arms. Um, and then uh, I wanted to add some, some more different designs in, and uh, they were all hand-painted on me, but I, some of the transfers lasted for a week, so I had to just walk around Toronto with a ton of tattoos, and I felt like a totally different person. It was awesome. <laughs> So, if you had your choice, what historical period would you choose to do a film in? Uh, probably, well, I'd love to do westerns, you know, early American westerns, and I, I grew up loving Jane Austen. So, I really, I had this vision of, of getting to, to do Jane Austen. You know, I'm a girl from Texas, and um, the, the older I get, the more I realize that's really what I am, but when I was, when I was younger, I used to... I used to really, really want to just dive into to, um, you know, the world of Jane Austen, and and, um, and actually my favorite movie growing up was Camelot, which is you know even much further back in time. But, but uh, that was that was the, the movie that made me want to be an actress. I love Vanessa Redgrave. With all this combination of Jane Austen and zombies and other things, you think you'd be able to combine these? It's worlds. a thing. No, I think they will. Yeah. I think they're going to. We're rooting for you, right there. <laughs> Hi. Um, so your role in Dollhouse, um, Bennett and Caroline had a really special relationship, and I was wondering if, did Joss tell you, because I saw a lot of subtext in there, did Joss tell you to play as if you were, like, had romantic feelings for her, or did that just happen? <laughs> She's a very pretty girl. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, well, that's an issue, but, you know, I just wanted to. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I just, I, I, um, again, that was sort of a natural thing for me because when I was, when I was in, when I was high school age, I never, I never really went to school and, um, because I was dancing during the day. And so I guess from my perspective, I had a lot of fascination for girls that were my age that I perceived as, as, normal or popular or cool and um, so that's just kind of what naturally happened to me when when I when I was working with with um, with Liza and, and, and trying to build the character up in it that's just that's just how it seemed to me hi summer hi uh, I uh, can't speak for the rest of the audience but um, I myself I can't go too far into this panel with somebody without somebody coming up to this mic and saying it's hot in here, must be summer. <laughs> but going off of that, but going off of that, uh, you obviously did an appearance in Big Bang Theory as well as Chuck, which is another one of my big all-time favorite shows. And I'm just wondering, what is one of your most favorite shows to do a cameo in? And in the future, is there one that you'd like to do a show for? That's a good idea. <laughs> well, I, I uh, one of my favorite shows right now is Modern Family. I love that one, so I never miss it. And, <clears throat> gosh, my mind is going blank. I watch, watch a lot of TV. Um, <laughs> I love TV. Uh, I would love to, yeah, Modern Family is probably my favorite. And I, I just think that the, the, level of, of artistry on that show and the level of skill is just knocking it out of the park and I would I'd, I'd love to, to go work with them and learn from them. You've had similar advantages. I mean, Modern Family, really the writing is so good, and concise and witty and uh, and you've had that too. I mean, do, do you, when you pick a project, do you check the writers first to make sure well, you never know. You just never know what people are going to like and, and how the show's going to turn out. I think that, from and this is just me being honest, even more than the, than, than the story as a whole, I just have to connect to the character. And I'm pretty, you know, I'm, 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 I get very emotional about which roles I take. I've, I've turned down a lot, of, a lot of great jobs just because I didn't, I, I didn't feel right doing the doing the role. It, it has to, it has to, I have to connect with it. It has to feel right for me. I'm pretty conservative. I, I um, like to choose girls that I think are, are 
complex and are layered and have an inner strength and that made me feel good about being a girl. And um, it, for me, it's just that gut reaction. Hi, so recently I had to sit out of dance for three weeks and I was really missing it after the first couple weeks. And I was wondering how it felt for you when you first like stopped dancing for a while. I felt like I felt like no one was going to recognize me. I, I felt that that was my identity. I thought people wouldn't know how to describe me. I was always Summer the ballet dancer, and uh, I, I, it was it was a really it was a really trying time in my life. Not to be overly dramatic, but because that's all I did with my that's all I learned how to do. That's what I did every day. It was it was really hard for me to understand what my identity was going to be like. And I remember when I first came to LA, I had hair down to my waist, and they said you have to cut it. And um, you know they said you know you're, you're not you're not contemporary. You don't look like you don't look like an actress. And it was really scary for me. And I went but I went home to my hotel room and I cut it myself, just with scissors. And um, and I realized. I'm still alive and I'm still a person, and I, 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 and I have, I have a point of view, and I have, um, I, I had a, a, it was a sense of freedom actually for me because I felt like people still see me. I'm still here. I know that sounds that might sound really strange, but that's how it felt for me. Thank you. Hello. Um. I. Uh, I just wanted to. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, I wanted to say I, when I was watching Firefly, and I know you were the dancer before that. You're so graceful, and you really see the dancing and everything. And then it was a very different sort of grace when you were in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, what sort of training did you do for that? When we first started the pilot, uh, we took Terminator lessons. <laughs> we did. Uh, it was it was me and I was was uh, uh, who else was there? It was me and Owen Owen Yeoman, I think, and um, I think it was, there were three of us, and we would walk around the room and we would actually. Pretend that we were Terminators and, and 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 think about how our Terminators would move. And each one of us had a different. We were all all three a different model, and uh, so we each sort of built uh, built our characters from a physical place first. It was really fun. We we um, I decided that I wanted to. Thomas Thomas Decker makes so much fun of my Terminator walk. And sometimes he catches me doing it in real life, and, and um, I. But I, I did. Too, I did um, start building the character from a, from a physical place. Awesome. Thank you. Any hope at a future convention like this? You'll be hosting a Terminator class. Yeah. I, I don't think I could. Uh, um, no. <laughs> Would anyone here attend? I was just re-watching Serenity the other day, and I was wondering how hard and how many takes did you have to do to be suspended from that ceiling? Was that all you, or did... Yes, they, they, <laughs> they, built the, they, they, they built the hallway too short the first time. They actually did a measurement of me on the floor to build the hallway, and so they made it too short the first time, and then, and then we had to wait, and they, re, they, they rebuilt it, so that, and then it was too big. And then it was just right. So then, they, so then they got me up there, and there was a hole in the ceiling, and Chad Stahelski was holding me up with a pick. You know, I had a, I had a, a, a brace around my waist, and he was just holding me. And Joss came up, and he looked at me, and he said, you know, it took us so long to, to get this set up. Would you mind just hanging out up there in between takes? It's like, okay. And so he just left me up there. Um, I'm sorry. So you mentioned uh, story ideas for a new Firefly series. Um, I was wondering what your ideas were for uh, that series. 
River runs the show. That's it. I was wondering, um, during all the combat that you do in the various shows, do you do that all yourself? Do you do your own stunts? Well, I, they wouldn't let me, in, in Serenity, there were some, there were a few really, really dangerous, uh, they told me not to do that. Um, there were some really uh, dangerous stunts, like the, the one tumbling down the stairs. Um, there were a few that they wouldn't let me do, but Joss really, really wanted me to do it myself, and I, I would say I did, you know, about 85, 90% myself. Never again. <laughs> So, um, I really love all of the quotes from Wibbo and Firefly, and I was wondering if you had a personal favorite um, quote from Wibbo or from, from anyone else. Um, I think my, my favorite would be, um, <laughs> uh, no power in the verse can stop me. That's the one you see I write all the time. <laughs> I think that one, you know, everyone can use it. It's probably a good thing for us to remind ourselves of. So yeah, that would be my personal favorite. So recently you did some episodes of Grey's Anatomy. I was wondering if we're going to see more of you as the season progresses. I wish. It was really, really nice to be a nurse. I really enjoyed myself. I fancied myself. I, I thought, you know, if acting, if acting doesn't work out, I'm, I'm going to be a nurse. This feels good. <laughs> I loved it, and I'm, you know, I, I, I've loved Sandra O oh for so many years, and she's, I think, again, what I was talking about with, with Adam, when, when an actor's really good, when they're really good, they come to work, they don't have an attitude, they're, they're fun. She was really whimsical. Really, she just made it fun, and I was, of course, very very scared to work with her and I didn't know if, uh, if, if she was going to, 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 I just, I didn't know what it was going to be like. I was very scared and, and she was, she was so much fun. Just, just so y'all know, I, I think that you should know that. And Ellen too, super fun, super fun ladies. Is there anyone you've worked with where you felt intimidated to be on, on set with? Pretty much everybody, yeah. <laughs> I, so I'd like to start by saying that my whole family bonded over Firefly, so we just love all of you. I was wondering, I'm sure you've had some very strange things happen with fans, but what's your favorite thing that has ever happened to you with a fan? Or what was, you know, the, the best thing that someone's ever done for you? You know, there have been a few people who have written to me and said that, um, that they've really related to the character and it's helped them get through a really difficult time in their life and and not to go into detail I, I really I really respect and appreciate the letters that I get from people and and not to be specific but but there have been there have been a few times where um, in some way the character has been there with them through a hard time and that's an honor that you just can never take for granted it's really really special to me and um, and I keep those letters, and um, they 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 encourage me. They encourage me sometimes through through hard times. Okay. Hi. Um. So I saw on one of the Firefly DVDs and the extras that sometimes when things would go wrong, they blame you. I was wondering how that all got started. Well, it was my, the first time was my fault. That, that's legit. Uh, Nathan started this, um, okay, so River didn't have a lot of lines, and uh, we were doing this, this one -er, very, very long shot, beautiful shot, beautifully constructed shot that everyone was in and it started on one end of the ship and then it, went, it was in objects in space where I'm holding that little rubber ball and I'm looking at it and contemplating it and, and um, it took forever to set the shot up and I was at the very end of the shot and they got through the whole shot and then I had one line and I was just, I was really in it. I was really in the moment and I was really, I was really river. And um, it was like crickets, crickets, crickets. They were waiting for my line, and I just never said it. And so, and 
Nathan goes, Summer! <laughs> From way off in the ship somewhere, and so... It's the only thing I did, it was just that one moment, and then from then on, whenever anybody messed up, they yelled at me. <laughs> I, um, I have a question about Terminator. Uh, when the series finished, it sort of ended in that cliffhanger of um, John Connor being stuck in the future. I'm just wondering if they actually had a plan of where that was going to go, if the series had continued, and if you could tell us what it was. I don't mind, because they cancelled us, so yes, I'll tell you. <laughs> we, were, we were going to be in the future, slash past, but I was going to be playing Allison, mostly, and then be Cameron in, in flashback, so it was going to be a reverse. But we were going to, you know, we were, we were going to pick up where that left off, that last shot of us in the future. Slash past. It's so confusing. I'm so glad you said that because I, I'll talk with people who want to get involved in a new series. And now networks seem to cancel things so fast that they feel like if they get invested in it, they're not going to really know what happened unless it's all resolved every hour of every, every issue. I almost feel like they should have some kind of mandatory written, here's what's going to happen in the future if you were nice enough to invest in our show. Um, if you ever get very powerful in Hollywood, I want you to institute that rule for us. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'd be happy to because even as an actor, it's really hard to get attached because every every pilot you do, every episode you do, you have to be so invested that you're you know you're giving your heart and soul and then on the on, on the other side of things you have to be ready to say goodbye the next day because shows get cancelled before you even see them. Um, it, the, the odds of getting a show picked up are so rare and then on top of that to have a, a show last even one season is like a miracle now. And it's really hard, you know, to, to go out and ask people to watch your show because um, because they do get invested and then a show gets canceled. It happens to me all the time too. I, I get invested and then and then um, you never know what happens. But but I'm hoping that it's going to turn around. We can't we can't uh, we can't give up because I love TV and, um, and so I'm not giving up. I think that I think that you know we're going through a weird phase right now. The show's getting canceled, but I think that we'll find. We'll find a happy medium soon, sooner than later. Someday there's going to be a future blog post. Summer saves TV. Nice to see. I wish I could. Hi. So I was wondering, how fun was it to play a character like River on Firefly? Um, it was really, really, really fun. <laughs> I loved it. I had a great time. It was um, it was uh, a great honor and a great learning experience. And and um, as an actress, probably one of the best roles you could ask for. Yes. Hello. I'm uh, ten days out from Afghanistan, and we're going to be using the. Uh... <laughs> We're going to be using a Pashto interpreter to teach the world of Firefly to the Afghan uniform police. And I, I was just wondering, have you ever watched Firefly dubbed in another language? And who's the funniest character to watch in a foreign language? I have not. I have not seen it in a different language, ever. Ever. I don't know. What's your, have you seen it? What's your favorite? <laughs> Um, actually, if you get the chance to see it dubbed in French, Wash Ooh. is hilarious. I think I've heard that. Yeah, I think I've heard that before. That's so funny. He's, he's funny in English, too. <laughs> so I'm a big um, Cape fan, and yeah, I love the Cape, and I'm just really sad that it got canceled. I really wanted to see what happened, but I really want to see what your experience was of, um, of Orwell, especially during the lit. Well, that was, um, I loved working with that actor that I, that I worked with. I, I, I love, as an actor, just 
being in a room with one other one other actor and just acting. You know, it's it's um because I've done so much action, it was fun for me um, to get to do that. And I felt like Orwell was going to be a great transition for me because she was a little bit more mature than some of my other characters and, and more of an adult, but still sort of struggling to find her own identity and. She had um, she had a lot of action elements, and it felt it felt like home for me. But it also felt like I was moving into to um, a, a new a new chapter for me as an actress. So I was I was very sad that it didn't that it didn't catch on. But then again, you know, I'm so used to it. I I um, I, I was prepared. I was prepared. But um, I loved I, I I loved that episode. You know, Tony Tony Graffia wrote it from. Um, from Terminator, she she wrote also uh, my favorite episode from from Terminator. So um, that was a great experience to get to to say her words again, and uh, and I loved I loved the whole cast. I had a, I had an amazing time on that show, and I was very happy there. Are there specific exercises or, or things that you do to improve your uh, your craft? I mean, you seem very committed as a dancer. You have all this discipline. Uh, and focus. Is there is there something that you do now to try and broaden yourself as an actress? I'm still trying to find still trying to find my technique because I I don't think I really have one. I think it's just. It's <laughs> all you. Yeah. Woohoo! Thank you. Um. Uh. Mostly, mostly the thing that works for me the most is just. Imagine that you're that character. It's really that simple for me. The more simple it is, usually the better it works out. The less I try to think and work it, uh, the, the better it turns out for me. There's all these aspiring Shakespearean trained actors right now just suffering because, well, I've been training for years and she's saying, just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> that natural talent's unfair. <laughs> Hi, um, first I just wanted to say, um, I started watching Firefly when I was in middle school and your character, River, and then you became my picture of beauty as I was going through that time developing myself into a person. I just wanted to thank you for the inspiration it gave me to become my own person for the rest of my life. Um, my thank question you. was, um, after playing River, did you have a different idea of, of yourself as a, as a person and of, of people similarly afflicted by disorders? Well, I, you know, for me that was just a it, was a, it was a, it was a very natural relationship between me and River. It didn't feel like I was, like, um, it felt like a part of me that was just coming out. I, I'm not, I'm not like River, I'm, not, I'm definitely not a genius and I'm definitely not truly good at martial arts, but, um, <laughs> But it was just a part of me. So I and I feel like it was a it was a part of, of me growing up. Like like you said, maybe that you that you related to it when you were in high school. I felt like um, uh, it was it was just a, a natural part of me growing up, and it was it was a it was the perfect role to accompany me when I was first starting out as an actress, and and it sort of pushed me on my way. Thank you. Hi. Have you used your cookbook and have you found any favorites? My cook, my, my birthday cookbook? Correct. Yes, me and my sisters try it all the time. I, I thank you again for and anybody, who, anybody who contributed to the Summer Glau birthday cookbook. I love it. But it is very exotic. You know, I'm, I'm um, not as adventurous about cooking, uh, Cooking outside of my Texas comfort zone, <laughs> but the the um, I'm not going to say a favorite because because that I I love all of them. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, going back to the uh, the future of the Firefly universe, I was wondering, have you seen the fan sequel Brown Coats Redemption? And if you have, what did you think of it? I have not seen it yet. I have not seen it. Were you in it? <laughs> Oh. Well, I have not seen it yet, but I've heard that it's very good, and I, I do, I do want to see it, and I hope that they make more, continue the story. Thank you. Hi, I was wondering, uh, with your background in ballet, if you had ever auditioned or wanted to be in Black Swan, like a, the big movie last year. 
Oh, I did. I auditioned for a role that didn't end up in in the story. Um, but I never got to dance Black Swan in real life. It it's um it's probably the most famous big story ballet, and where I danced in Texas, uh, nobody would come see it. So <laughs> I loved the movie. That was very very good. Uh, hi. Uh, um... I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned a new pilot on TNT, I was wondering what that was, and if we wanted to write you, like you said some, some of your fans have, where would we go to find that? I just, I, I um, released a new address that hopefully is going to work better than the last one, because I know that some people were having a hard time getting their letters answered, and I, I, I hope that all of you know that if I do get a letter, I really do my best to try to get it back to you. So the, the, the address is supposed to be on Twitter. I, I heard that it's on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, but somebody re released it. Um, it's a P.O. box. And I hope that all of you will try it out, because I think it's, I think it's gonna, really going to work better. Zero minutes. <laughs> we'll get one more. OK. Um, I have many river moments that I think are great, but I think the best was the extra in Firefly, in which you got to see her with her doctors as she's being interviewed during the procedures, and I was wondering what that was like making them for you. The River Tam sessions? Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, Go those, that, I had nightmares about that. That was really, really, those were, I, I went to a dark place. It was funny because I, I don't know where I was, I was out of town and, and um, I was coming back. Um, and Joss called me and he said, I want us just to set up, we're just going to rent this little uh, warehouse and we're just going to make these, uh, I have this idea and we're going to do, um, what, do, what do you call it when, when they hide, they hide uh, Easter advertising eggs, like an, an online? Stuff? Well, well, it wasn't subliminal, viral. Subliminal. viral, yes, but viral, they were, we, we was going to hide, and this was a new concept to me, I had never heard of it before, and, and he gave me, I, I think I learned all of the sessions in one night. And I didn't really have any time to think about how I was going to do them. It just it was just me and Joss in this room just going crazy and and um, I recently just watched it after not watching it for many, many years. And um, I I was so glad that I had that experience because it was it was really intense for me as an actor. I just I didn't have time to be scared because I, I uh, was just doing it the next morning. I had nightmares all night and I, I, um, I, I actually dreamed that I was in this, this situation, but um, I'm, I'm really glad that we did that. I, I thought the writing was, was brilliant and um, for me it was actually some of the most challenging stuff I, I did was River. Thank you. Thank you. We're completely out of time, but how about we uh, send Summer Glau out with the Seattle best wishes for all things in the future.